Hey y'all, welcome to 6th grade, chapter 11, lesson 5. I've already written the formula to so find volume up here at the top. We're going to go ahead and go down to number 2. It says we're going to have 5 by 1 by 4 and a half. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do this, just so that you have another tool in your toolbox if, you're avail if you have that, and um, if you're able to. Okay, well, 5 times 1 is still 5, and then we're going to multiply that by 4 and a half. So, you can absolutely do dead man and turn that four and a half into an improper fraction. Put the five over one. It would be nine over two because two times four is eight plus one is nine. And we keep our denominator. That equals out to 45 over two when you multiply straight across. So then you've got to put 45 in the box, two outside, and do the math. Okay, two goes into four. 2 times 2 times 2 is 4, subtracting is 0. 0 is definitely smaller than 2, so I'm going to bring down my 5. Well, 2 is going to go into 5. 2 times 2 times 2 is 4. I have 1 left over. Well, 1 is my new numerator, and my denominator stays the same. So, 22 and a half, okay? Okay, and we're going to say unit, and it's going to be cubed because we multiply units by units by units with units cubed or cubic units okay all right the other way to do this is we would have five by four and a half now this is really only going to work if you have a whole number and a fraction okay so five times four is 20 and five halves Okay, if you had if you had five halves, you would have two and a half holes. So plus two and a half, well, 20 and two is 22, and you still have your half, okay? If you have a whole number and a fraction, okay? That's the only way. And if you can't do it this way, don't worry about it. It's a little more mental math, okay? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do number three. Okay, and it says five and a half by one and a half by two. So we're not going to be able to do what we did last time because we, we have two fractions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn our fractions and do dead man. Okay, well, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11, over 2. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, and I keep my denominator, and I get a 2 over 1. Now, the cool thing about this is you can absolutely cancel, cross-cancel, okay? Well, 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 2 once. That's going to be the only thing that I have the ability to cancel, but it still makes it a little bit easier to multiply straight across. So 11 times 3 is 33, times 1 is still 33, okay? 2 times 1 times 1 is still 2. So now 2 into 33, okay? 2 goes into 3 one time. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract and get 1. 1 is smaller than 2, so I'm going to bring down my 3. 2 goes into 13. 6 times 6 times 2 is 12. Subtract get one. Now that one is my new numerator and I keep my denominator. So 16 and a half. Okay, and it's going to be unit cubed. You can also put cubic unit. That is also acceptable. It's just easier for me to write it this way. Okay, all right. You guys do number four. We're going to go ahead and do number five together. Miguel is pouring liquid into a container that is four and a half by three and a half by two. How many cubic inches fill the liquid? So whatever it is, it's going to be in inches cubed. Okay. When you're multiplying inches by inches by inches, that's one, two, three inches. So that exponent is a three. Okay. We're going to dead man. Okay. 
2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, and it stays over 2. Okay? 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and it stays over a 2. Then, I'm just going to put that 2 over a 1, which means that I can cancel out at least one of those 2s and make them 1. Okay? So, now on the top, I've got 9 times 7, which is 63, times 1 is still 63. And 2 times 1 times 1 is 2. So, 2 into 63. Okay? 2 goes into 6. 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract 0. 0 is definitely smaller than 2, so I'm going to bring down this 3. 2 goes into 3. 1 times. 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract. Get 1. My 1 is my new numerator, and my denominator stays the same. So, 31 and a half inches cubed or cubic inches, okay? Make sure you guys are writing your work down, okay? All right. A shipping crate is shaped like a rectangular prism. It is five and a half by three by three, okay? Now, we have an extra whole number, so we're not going to do what we did before. Okay, you just need to have one whole number, one fraction in order to do what we did on number two. Okay, so doing dead man. Two times five is 10 plus one is 11 and I keep my denominator. I'm gonna put that three over a one and I'm gonna put the other three over a one. Okay, so 11 times three is 33. Times three, well three times three and three times three, that's 99. And my denominator is 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. 99 inside the box, 2 outside. Okay? 2 goes into 9 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. Subtract. Get 1. 1 is smaller than 2, so I'm going to bring down my 9. 2 goes into 19. 9 times. 9 times 2 is 18. Subtract. Get 1. That 1 is my new numerator, and I keep my denominator. So, 49 and a half feet by feet by feet, so feet cubed, okay? You can absolutely write out cubic feet if you want to. I don't. I'm not enjoying my own handwriting that much. Okay, guys, we're going to go over into the back where you guys are going to do a lesson check, just like always, okay? And then we're going to go ahead and do the spiral review. A parallelogram shaped piece of stained glass has a base measuring two and a half, a height measuring one and a quarter. What is the area of the piece of stained glass? Well, a parallelogram is just a rectangle, so we're just doing length times width. Okay, so the base is the length, that's two and a half, and the width is one and one quarter. Let's find area. Okay, we're going to dead man it again. Two times two is four, plus one is five, so we have five over two. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. I'm going to keep that over 4, okay? I can't cross-cancel anything. I don't have anything that goes into the same thing on the same side. You need a top and a bottom, okay? If it's not on top and bottom, then you can't do it, okay? Just because there's two fives doesn't mean I can turn them both into one. You need one on the top and one on the bottom, okay? All right, so over the top, 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, you can absolutely go and do it out the long way if you want to. I'm going to go, I know that 8 times 3 is 24. 25 minus 24 is 1, and I keep my denominator. Okay? So, 3 and 1 eighth inches, and I multiplied inches by inches, so it's inches squared. Okay? All right. A flag for the sports club is a rectangle measuring 20 inches by 32 inches. Within the rectangle, there's a square with a side length of 6. So it's a square, so it's going to be 6 by 6. Okay. What is the area of the flag that is not part of the yellow square? Okay. So, let's fix my paper, so it's not my scrap paper. Okay. 
So first, we're going to do 32 by 20. And then we're going to subtract that 6. I don't know why I underlined that. Ignore the underline. It's not a fraction. Okay? So this ends in a 0. So I'm just going to take that and put it on the end. Now, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. So 640. There we go. Okay. Minus 6 times 6 is 36. So we're going to subtract the 36. Okay. So 0 can't take away 6. So I'm going to borrow 1, making it a 10. 10 take away 6 is 4. 3 take away 3 and bring my 6 down. That is 604 inches. And we multiplied inches by inches. Inches squared. Okay. All right. What is the surface area of the rectangular prism on the net? Well, we have three by four, and we have two of those. So we're going to times it by two. Now I'm done with that one, and I'm done with that one. Okay? Actually, I have another three by four here, and another three by four here. So I'm actually going to multiply that by four. Okay? Then I have a four by four. And I do have one, two of those. Okay? So, three times four is 12, times four is 48. Four times four is 16, 16 times two is 32. I'm gonna add those up, okay? Eight plus two is 10, carry the one. One plus four is five, plus three is eight. 80. Square units or units, because we don't know what they are. They're not inches, feet, or any of that. And we multiply inches by inches. So, what? Okay. What is the surface area of the square pyramid? So, all right. So, for the square, it's going to be seven by seven. Okay. Or one of the triangles is going to be 7 times 8 times 1 half. Or divided by 2. You can do either one. In fact, I think I'm going to do the divided by 2. Because we're not dealing with a fraction. So it'll be a little easier. Okay? So, and then I have to multiply that by 1, 2, 3, 4 sides. Okay? So, let's do it, guys. Okay? 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 8 is 56. Okay, so 56 inside the box, 2 outside the box. Okay, I have to divide it by 2. Okay, now 2 goes into 5. 2 times, 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract, get 1. 1 is smaller than 2, so I'm going to bring down my 6. 2 goes into 16. 8 times 8 times 2 is 16, so cross is 0. And now I have 28, and that's for one of the triangles, but I need four of those. So I'm going to multiply it by 4. Okay? 4 times 8, 32. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So now I have 112, and I'm going to add on that 49. Okay? 2 plus 9 is 11, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, and bring that 1 down. So, 161, it's in centimeters, and I multiplied centimeters by centimeters each time, so it's centimeters squared. Make sure you guys are writing your work down, okay? All right, thanks for hanging out, guys. For 11.5, come on back for 11.6. See you soon.